Hey, redheads and everyone else listening. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Adrian. And today we are talking about redhead celebrities. And that's why our guest is super, super important because it's Christiane Seidel, who you probably know her from Boardwalk Empire or the new Netflix miniseries Godless. Uh, she is a natural born redhead and she's going to be our guest today talking all about her career growing up as a natural redhead. And we have so many fun questions to ask her. So who was your favorite redhead growing up? If someone asked you that question, what would you say? Well, I'm 31 now. And so when I was, when we were growing up, Lindsay Lohan was really, I mean, Freaky Friday, Freaky Friday. I mean, Mean Girls came out when I was in high school. She was really just such a beautiful redhead. I loved her. She was my age. I just thought she was so cool. And really, there weren't any redheads. I mean, how about you? There really wasn't. I guess I would have to say Lucille Ball just because Nana, who, if you're listening, our Nana was our dad's mother, who we dedicated our H2 Bar bo- book to. And probably every H2 Bar box. <laughs> yeah, we think of her when we um, pick the products each month. But she really was an amazing redhead who loved dark mascara and, you know, just rocked being a redhead. So when we would s- sleep over our Nana and Papa's house, we would always watch Lucille Ball. Always. And for the longest time, I have to say, since it was black and white, I never knew that she was a redhead. I remember Nana talking to us, though, about her being a redhead. Yeah. I remember Lucille Ball was definitely a big part of us growing up. We watched her all the time with Nana. Um, But there really weren't any redheads. I don't really remember redheads being a part of Hollywood's red carpet. No. We've always loved watching red carpet. Always. Oh, my God. I love Red carpet season. And I want to say Nicole season. Kidman. Obviously, she's been an actress yeah, for a long time, but she went blonde. Now she's blonde. But in uh, Big Little Lies, that's out on HBO, which is such a good show. If it you is. Watched it. Uh, she is a redhead in that. So I, I don't know. I feel like in some so things what I is really she identify. Naturally? I think naturally she's a redhead. If you look oh, at okay. pictures of her naturally, she has very curly red hair. And I don't know if she embraces it or not but I do remember thinking of her as a redhead actress when I was growing up and then she went blonde it's so, kind of like Marilyn Monroe remember those photos surfaced yeah months that, ago yeah, 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 and she was she actually, was born, actually a redhead. born a redhead yeah so she went platinum blonde I guess too you think Reba of course when we were younger mom always wanted to watch listen to country music she was a yeah. redhead yeah but I don't remember Watching the award shows, like how we were obsessed with TRL and the MTV Movie Awards. Oh, yeah. That's when like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears. Okay, there was Ginger Spice. There was. Oh, and Spice Girls. Spice Girls. Light up your life. Every Woo, boy, every girl. Light up your life. And I do but rem- I, I remember everyone, like when I remember I was like in first or, no, I think I must have been in like second or third grade and we were out in the playground and all the girls, like five girls would line up and I was always Ginger Spice. And I thought that that was so cool to be included because I was, in, redheads are never included. You know? And then we have to talk about Titanic just came to mind. Kate, Kate Winslet. Winslet. She was a redhead in the movie. She was so beautiful. Yeah. So there yeah, were. She's one of my favorite actors. There there were redheads that were maybe dyeing their hair and playing parts that, you know, were redhead characters. I just kind of relate and always think about Lucille Ball. I know. I know. She's- and Lindsay Lohan. But now Lindsay Lohan, she's a Mykonos doing her thing. Doing her thing. I know. I still follow her just because I feel like, I'm like it's like an obligatory she's also, Tory thing to do. She's also like a <laughs> spokesperson for lawyer.com or something like that. She, it's very random now. Yeah, it's very random. But anyway, uh, Christiane Seidel is here to talk to us. Um, We're going to call her in a few minutes. But she is such an inspiration because she's worked super hard to get to where she is. She's gorgeous. Um, She has two kids, set of twins. She just had twins, yeah. So I'm I'm pumped to talk to her about it. And then if you guys haven't watched Godless, I know we'll talk about her character when when we interview her. It's an amazing miniseries. I don't really like Wild Wild West shows, but Brian and I gave it a shot and we binged watch it right when it came out. And then it won a bunch and was nominated for a bunch of Emmys. And she plays a really amazing character at the end. It's almost, it's kind of shocking like how her character develops and her character's name is Martha. 
try to say that name. It's Stephanie's Ma- Boston accent. I know. It's like the one name I Martha. can't really say. <laughs> I know. That's so funny. So Christiane is an actress. She lives in New York City with her husband and newborn twins. Uh, she's noted for her acting roles as Martha in the Netflix miniseries Godless and as Sigrid in the HBO TV series Boardwalk Empire. We were both big fans of the Boardwalk Empire, and uh, we actually interviewed her in a 2013 interview so long ago ago on howtobearedhead.com and one of my favorite quotes from her was when she said all redheads just like me will look back and realize it was a very good thing to be born a natural redhead so let's call her up and talk to her about all this cool stuff the h2 bar box a monthly beauty subscription box for redheads each box is worth 80 dollars plus and each product is redhead friendly approved Head to h2barbox.com to subscribe and use code PODCAST to receive 20% off. Hello? Hi. Hi. It's Adrian and Stephanie. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> well, thanks. How we, are you? We were just, uh, you know, we just did a ton of research about you. And we're like, we're just, oh God. we're so proud of everything you've done. <laughs> like, I'm like, she's oh, so successful. She's done such a great job. And Stephanie, I mean, I saw Godless. I loved it. But she's obsessed with Godless. <laughs> I thought the oh. sh- I, I loved the show. And I was telling someone, you know, mm-hmm. usually I'm not drawn to, wa- you know, Western, Wild Wild West shows. And I thought your character mm. was amazing. And we'll dig into that Um I thought the ending was just, oh, my God. My husband and I binge watched it right when it came out. And then to see you on it, it was awesome. So, yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. Oh, wow. That's a huge compliment. I love that. That is always great to hear because the people, a lot of people say that, like, they're not drawn to Westerns. And I get it because I'm not, I wasn't either. But it's different. Yeah. And then all the actors, I don't know. I just thought everything, you guys had so much chemistry on the show. And then seeing you guys at the Emmys, I don't know. I just like, I felt like I like knew you guys. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, I always tell my husband that I know I love a show when I put down my phone and my computer and I'm so Mm -hmm. into the show. I'm not looking like at my Instagram Mm -hmm. and missing a scene. I literally was like, in it the entire time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. And it, I love that you say that because it was, um, well, that you put away your social media during that time because it's like, it's becoming that thing, right? You get so yeah. used to just like doing that. But also the, um, the, the, it's so true. Like we have, we have such a bond, us women who met on the set because we were staying together in Santa Fe for like three months and or longer some people longer and uh we just we're on this like text chain and we constantly see each other when we can and it's been so special i've never been on a set like that that's amazing but all, to hear. yeah yeah and you because know, we all were, women bonded sorry yeah, that's really great that you bonded because i feel like sometimes there's a bad rap that women don't get along so i love I hate, that yeah like I, women empowerment yeah. I know. I don't know what, what, I mean, I haven't actually, I've been, I guess, lucky because either I've been a really male heavy set or um, this one was, you know, there were a lot of guys too, but it was these different worlds that we were shooting. So it was always like the women were usually shooting together and the guys were shooting separately together. But it was so interesting because it didn't matter like where you were on the call sheet, like if you're somebody or nobody everyone just really got along and we just, I mean, but we partied a lot and we, you know, we went for dinner all the time and we like had dance parties. It was just so special. Oh, that sounds really so good. fun. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah. so great. Stephanie and I were even talking about, we've connected with you for so long now. I was, I was looking back. I know. We did an interview with you on how to be a redhead in 2013. 2013. No way. Is it that long ago? Yeah. Wow. And, I we, know. and I feel like Stephanie and I were both thinking like how much you flourish, not only in your career, but also personally a lot has happened oh thank you but you guys I mean right back at you you guys have been growing and you're so like so successful it's so great oh thank you thank you we feel the same about you so we kind of just wanted to jump into the questions um and we know that 
you know, we were going back into the interview and you had made this quote about growing up as a redhead and you said, it definitely wasn't easy as a kid. I felt quite ugly and I can't even believe you used that word, by the way, because you're so gorgeous. I know. Um, <laughs> and I didn't want to stand out. I was teased and called all sorts of names. Once I was allowed to wear mascara, once I was allowed to wear mascara, a whole new world opened up for me. I finally had eyes. <laughs> I, love yeah. I feel like every redhead. So how was it growing up with red hair? Because we know that you were raised in Europe, right? I was, yeah. Mostly in Germany and then also a little bit in Denmark. Um, but yeah, I feel like it was a horrible situation to be in. I wanted to, like, I just wanted those, like, blah hair that everyone else had because you know when you're little you just I feel like it was also pre-social media where Mm. you're like you just I was in a small town and you just want to fit in like and you want to just be you don't want to stand out and I I think nowadays that's actually like a good thing like a, a good thing about social media it can be good that that you can see oh my god there's so many like me right yeah. or um there's so many and it's a good thing or but back then I mean I was just I was being teased and because of it I, I kept thinking about I actually thought about this um the other day there is a German uh, children's series that actually has been around. I think it started as a radio play in the 60s or 70s, and then it became a TV show. It's like a, um, it's like a uh, this this little troll or a little. He looks like a child, but is a I don't know what they're called. They're called them kobolds in German, and he has red hair, and his name is Pumoko. And um, he's invisible to everyone except for the one person he stays with. And that's like real, what do you call it? Like he's animated and everyone else is uh, just a regular person, right? So the the show like we all grew up on. And so they called me that. Oh, <laughs> did. oh my yeah. gosh. Kids can be so mean. They, I was really going to say with that. You, doesn't it? I know. I remember things people said about me too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right? I mean, didn't you like uh, didn't you feel the same way? Like, yeah. As a red hair? yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And then this is Stephanie. I dyed my hair blonde for over 8 years because I wow. wanted to hide the fact that I had red hair cuz I got picked on so badly as kids and oh, you remember gosh. those I still remember things people said about like my freckles and my red mm-hmm. hair, but now of course it's made me who I am today and I'm I'm thankful that I guess I'm not thankful that it happened to me, but I know now when I eventually have kids one day, you know, that I know what to tell them if they experience Mm -hmm. the same thing. And it's made me a lot stronger. But yeah, I think a lot of redheads over the years, we've heard so many stories from different followers of ours. And um, it's great to see, you know, what you said about social media. And we see the positive side of things when it comes to like Instagram, we receive so many messages from oh. girls that say, you know, I love my red hair now. Thank you. And Aww. it's nice to see that because the confidence in being a redhead is. And it takes time. It definitely does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I think, and I, I'm, I'm sure it helps a lot of kids who are somewhere in the middle of nowhere or where in areas where there's no redhead. Exactly. You know? you know, Adrian and I grew up in a, a small, small school in Providence, Rhode Island, and we were the only redheads in our whole. It was first, predominantly Italian. It was first Portuguese, grade yeah. through eighth grade. We were the only redheads. So, <laughs> oh my god! And then high school, I think it was just like us two, and maybe a handful of other redheads, because our high school obviously got a lot bigger. But yeah, just we grew up in such an Italian family that we were the only redheads. Yeah, so yeah. And wow. In, in the interview, uh, you did say, I love this quote, and we talked about it in your intro before calling you, that you said all redheads, just like me, will look back and realize it was a very good thing to be born a redhead. So how do you feel now as a redhead? Do you feel like it helped you with your yeah, career? Yeah, like being an actress? Um, I think so. I think it makes you stand out. Um, I don't know if it like has prevented me from booking anything that where they're looking for blondes, because sometimes you feel like people are, have no imagination and I could actually (laughs) dye my hair blonde. But, um, I, I think actually it's also become more and more popular actually in like Hollywood or in the industry. And, um, I recently shot something that 
uh, they actually wanted my ha- hair to be redder than it is. And I've never ha- experienced that. They were like, we love your red hair, but we want to pump it up. Oh, I and, love that. Which was so fun because now I'm like, I still have the, like, it's slowly washing out, but it's such a great, I'm thinking about, like, keeping it up because it's, it's just has a little bit more, you know, pop to it. And it still looks natural. And, um, no, I think it's, um, it's something that makes me more unique. I fall into, you know, there's a lot of white, uh, Caucasian actresses and, um, especially now it's become more and more interesting or, which is important, you know, they're trying to cast more and more ethnicities and make everything a little bit more interesting. So at least I have a little bit of a, you know, asset that not everyone else in my category has as a Caucasian actor. Yeah. So then, of course, we had to ask this because I know at the Emmys this past year, every, a lot of people <laughs> and media mistaked you for Amy Adams, who you guys do look very similar. So it could be your doppelganger. Um, what was your reaction when you first heard that or maybe saw it in a news article redheads all look alike yeah i know <laughs> like we know we were just saying um before calling you that jessica chastain and bryce um dallas howard always joke because people think they look so similar and then when we did see <sighs> you in the red dress and then amy adams you guys do look very similar so what was your first reaction it's so funny because I was actually, I was already sitting at the, you know, inside the theater and the Emmys had started and I get a text from my manager saying like, oh, by the way, you just got best dressed list as Amy Adams. I'm like, what does that mean? What? And I looked, <laughs> I was like, what? And then I opened the link and I'm like, this is so funny because yes, I've heard it a lot of times. People have sometimes, even if I go to events um, where it could be likely that she could be there. Um, so in the context of like some industry event, uh, people sometimes give me like this double take or stare at me and I'm like, this is because they have no idea who I am. They just think I'm maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I know. Yeah. I feel yeah. like you're going to hear it forever now. You're, it's going to be something that you just hear. I'm sure. I don't mind. I mean, I love her. I think she is such, I, I really admire her for her work and I think she's a fantastic, um, fantastic actress. So I really don't mind. And I'm like, well, people can't afford her, you know, they can just hire me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's a great way of turning into a positive. I love that. Yeah. And we agree. We love Amy Adams too. So what yeah. do you want to talk about Godless more stuff? <laughs> yeah, I know. So, okay. I, we wanted to ask you, what was it like playing your character? Because Obviously, like, she's such a fierce character, especially in the last episode, one of the last scenes. So mm. I always joke with my accent um, that Martha is such a... Like, uh, she says I, Martha. I want to say Martha because of my New England accent. But what Martha. was it? Yeah. What was <laughs> I love it, it. What was it like playing her? Because we did see on your Instagram, too... Um, that you actually wore extensions, which we thought your hair mm-hmm. was so gorgeous in um, in the show. So what was it like playing her and kind of like wearing extensions on the beauty aspect as well? Oh, that was that was really cool because I um, we had this incredible hair um artist, uh, Jordi Schaffer. She was actually nominated for an Emmy for this. And she um had she asked me beforehand to send a sample of my hair like I literally cut cut off like some in the at the back or underside of my head I cut off some a strand of hair so she couldn't match it and of course this is all real hair this these extensions and it um it was incredible like she put them on and they fit and they looked real because that you know sometimes happens with extensions that you, you can see that this is real and that's not your hair but she did, did such a great job and it felt so cool. I mean, it was very uh, physically like after a whole day, like 15, 16 hours of these extensions, they were very heavy. I bet. Um, but it was, it was just so cool. Like I've never had this hair, hair that long. And, um, did it give it you was, like a fierce personality? I feel like when you have all that hair, you know, you're like, I'm so fierce. <laughs> like yeah. Badass. It gives you, yeah. It gives you sort of like a bigger personality right because you're so yeah she has all these it was also the 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 wedding dress like I had to wear this amazing Mm. um 
wedding dress they created for this character and then the big hair and this big white dress and all the silk and it was making me feel yes it made me feel way more fierce and bigger than myself you know um that's the beauty of of the hair and costume and makeup departments that they can just give you all the stuff that you can run with and have fun with but it was amazing to play martha it was a very special time in my life also because I had found out while I was shooting that I had was pregnant. I know. Um we were and, gonna ask. Yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a big like year because uh I was over there in Santa Fe, which is a magical place and it was beautiful and I made all these friends and then I got to play this really fierce character and then I had to like I had a you know, feeling I might be pregnant and then I had to go and get checked and I was, and it was, uh, I had to keep it secret. I chose to keep it secret because I was worried that, that, you know, our team would maybe be worried about certain things I was doing on set and I knew I was safe and it was so early on, but it was this really magical time where I had the secret. Also, I think that's also that also helped me play her. I felt like, yo, I'm Martha and I'm carrying like <laughs> two babies. <laughs> you, um, you didn't know it was twins. Did you know at that time or you didn't know? I knew uh, early on. I knew first I found out I, had, I, I was pregnant and then uh, I had to go in for another like early sonogram that you do and yeah it was crazy the whole moment because I was also not I was also not with my OB at home it was like in the hospital with this like it was so not nice and um and then this woman was like yeah by the way there's two I'm like what wow so do (laughs) twins run in your family or your husband's family no no it's just like you know sometimes it just happens like because they're fraternal they're like basically two eggs (laughs) Wow, my gosh. Yeah. And now, mm-hmm. how old are they? Did you just, I think we saw on their, your Instagram, they just had their 18th month birthday? Or? Yes, they're, yeah, they're like, uh, this month they're going to be like 20 months. So wow. a year, a little more than a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. It goes by fast, I'm sure. It's going so fast. And uh, it's always funny because it's that timeline where you see the difference in, in them. Like a year ago, they were like, barely coming out of this blob phase where they can't do anything. And then this year they're already running around and this is how you see how fast like time goes, but also um, because Godless was so special, you know, it was sort of like this um, before and after Godless, before and after babies. And yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's crazy. I'm actually probably going to go back to Santa Fe, or we are probably going back to Santa Fe over Christmas with the boys, which is so Aww. special. That would be so funny. I know, Santa Fe is on our list. Yeah, I heard that that's like a happiness vortex there. That oh, people are yeah. happier I there totally see that. with the vortex. Yeah. The way oh, the really? Is. Yeah, that's what I read. Opposite it's- of New York. <laughs> I mean, I love, we love New York City, but, you know, not everyone's happy. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not a vortex. Weather. No, yeah. I know, the snow and everything. Yeah. No, it's it's so magical even in the winter. It's just there's something to it. It's very um you know, we have this incredible nature, something I've like this kind of nature I've never seen before. Endless, endless like view and you know, mountains and desert. It's just yeah. You yeah. should definitely go. And we did want to ask too, because you know, Stephanie and I, we don't have children, but we're really focused on our career. We have like dogs, we, yeah, but I know. No, they're nothing. <laughs> it's, like, it's nothing like having kids. I'm <laughs> sure. Like children. <laughs> but how how is it to balance being a mom and having a career? Because I feel like so many people are like, well, you can't do both. You know, it's impossible to do mm. both. And I think you're doing such a great job. And so I'm sure people who are listening in are like, how do you do everything? You know, and do it so well. Well, I thank you. But I mean, that's a yeah, it's a very interesting question, because I feel like it is hard to do both, really, because you will never be able to do uh, to be perfect at both things. Um, And it's it's never really a win win. You have to I feel like I have to compromise, but it also makes me focus much more like I um, now that that I I took a while off, I wasn't really like mentally, physically, spiritually prepared to work for a while, mm. um, and I didn't want to. And it was also because with two, it's like um, you're really outnumbered, you know. Yeah. And I was just gonna say that. 
Yeah, and and I had to also really. Um, it took me time to get, to like find my role and find my identity. And um, in the beginning, all you are like you're a mom and you give everything, and it's so beautiful. But then you also feel like you're losing yourself, or who are you? And if you don't have you know your career and your life that you used to have, but I feel now that um, it's just become so great because I, I do have you know help, of course. Like first of all, my husband is amazing. Like it's really a fifty-fifty job. Like um, even though he's gone to work a lot, but I also have help. Like I have a babysitter who comes like regular hours during the week, and then during those hours that's when I schedule things and, um, do work. And of course, thankfully she's flexible enough. And we have a couple of other people who we can rely on. Um, when something else comes up, when I'm like, I was recently shooting every day and really late hours and I was coming home in the middle of the night. So we needed someone to come, you know, way more. And that wouldn't be possible like without help. Like it's, it really does take a village and it does, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing because then you feel you learn to ask for help. And um, yeah, but I think you can you can do both, but um, it's with a different focus. Like I will say no to more things now or I my love that. I love that. A lot of people have a hard time saying no. And actually, I was reading somewhere mm-hmm. about beauty tips and they were saying it may sound crazy, but being able to say no is a big beauty tip because you have to take mm. care of yourself and say no to things mm. and do things for yourself to make you feel good. And mm. a lot of people have trouble doing that, especially when you have kids. Yeah, that is such a good, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's so true because I really felt like I was going through phases where I was so spent because I was like breastfeeding and pumping and I was doing everything, but I had no sleep left. And then I had insomnia and I couldn't function. I literally was driving my car one day and I thought I was going to, I almost got into three accidents and I'm like, I'm not going to, I can't drive this way. Like it was really bad. And I realized, okay, there's like, something's got to give. I have to try to sleep or I have to take the shower and I have to have like an hour where I can go to yoga or something because then otherwise you're also not a good mom because you're so spent. Right. And you're, you have no patience or. Yeah. 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 So let's talk about beauty too, because I'm sure maybe your beauty has changed after having babies too, which we've heard of, (laughs) but, um, we, we, we were just talking about your article in 2013 and you named some really cool products that you like, like Benefit Their Real Mascara or like Anastasia Beverly Hills for your eyebrows. And I, we, were, yep. we, were, we wanted to talk more about Redhead Beauty because we know that, you know, you probably have changed up some things in the last five years. Yeah, yeah I'm so sure. <laughs> what are your favorites now? Um, I actually, um, one of my very absolute favorite products and also products that a lot of makeup artists use is um it's called bioderma sensibil it's this um cleaning uh like taking off your makeup and just getting rid of everything on your face that is like uh you know dirt and residual anything um and it's it's so good like I prefer that from like Rather than washing my face with water, water and so any like sort of cleanser, I will use that. Mm. It's also because, which is very interesting, I had, um, I had a couple years ago, I started getting really bad rosacea, which I, you know, know is a bad, uh, is something that a lot of redheads I think deal yeah, with. They definitely, yeah. And it was so bad that it really like it made me feel horrible because I had like the pimples and the the whole thing it wasn't just redness; it was really bad. And, um, the funny thing is I got pregnant and in my third trimester, it went away. <laughs> so oh, they wow. do say that That's you're, so interesting. yeah, that sometimes your body resets like with issues. And I had definitely the skin issue that was bad. And that's how I, um, discovered bioderma and I stuck with it, even though I don't have uh rosacea anymore or not as bad mm-hmm. because it's so, so clean. It's, it has like nothing, nothing bad. Um, that's like one thing I love, and I love the um, the rose water mist. Uh, I think it's called Heritage. Heritage. Yeah, it's like the I one you get at like water. Whole Foods or yeah, that pink bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, that I love. And then recently, actually, a makeup artist got me on to. Um, it's called. Uh, it's it's also like a spray you can put on over your makeup or under before you put on anything. It's called uh, 
from Tatcha. Is that how you say it? Tatcha? Yes, I think so. That- I know. There's so many brands out there that I think we say the right, you know, and then we <laughs> don't. But I think it's Tatcha. Yeah. Is it their makeup uh, setting spray? No, it's like oh, a dewy okay. skin mist. And it's it's sort of uh, you can see the mist itself. It's sort of white, um, but it's great because you can put it on any like it preps your skin. But then you can also um, use it uh, to set. I think your makeup or like freshen up. I love those things, especially if you if you have long days, right? Yeah, you can um, spray it on and feel refreshed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I will say, I'm still totally into Anastasia. Um, eyebrow I know, uh, powder. I know. <laughs> I know. Her stuff's amazing. It, there's nothing yeah. like a good eyebrow product and mascara for a redhead. It's just, it, it makes it's, everything look so good. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I mean, without, I will not like go out without a little bit of mascara on my, on my lashes. Would we. People would think we look sick <laughs> if we didn't wear it, right? We That's look- right. <laughs> yeah. There's no color. Yeah. It kind of just all blends in. And my husband's a redhead and I, and I never, <gasps> we actually never had, Stephanie and I growing up, we did not have any kind of jokes or no, people made fun of us, but I never heard this one. You don't have any, you don't have a soul. I never heard that before. And so. What? Yeah. And then when we started how to be a redhead, people would talk about it. I'm like, the South oh. Park. Yeah, they would say you don't you don't oh, look like you don't God. have a soul. And so oh. a couple of months ago I woke up and I obviously didn't have any makeup on or anything and my husband said to me, "You look like you have no soul." Oh, <laughs> I was like, "That's so mean to say that." But I he, guess he can say he that can cause say he's that. a redhead. Yeah, 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 but I'm like, That's "Oh right. gosh, I should definitely put something." On. I feel like his eyebrow, his eyelashes though are, are aren't blonde. They're almost like red. They are, yeah. Oh, wow. They're kind of like That's a red so cool. brown. Yeah. yeah. I always said I would That's never right. marry You're going to have like <laughs> you're yeah you're probably gonna get have like uh dark hair kids or something i know something funky will happen and i'll be so disappointed <laughs> i'll be oh like my oh my gosh i was totally expecting you to never have know kids. i know you you get i guess you never know so um we're so excited for your future and so we just wanted to know too like you know what is in the plans for 2019 and the future oh um Okay. Well, that's a that's a good question. Um, I well, there might be some, a really cool project uh, work wise I might be doing, but I I don't want to jinx it, so I don't want to say anything. But that would be I a really is, um, yeah. amazing um, kind of long term situation. Um, and other than that, my theater company, um, Skinny Even American Theater Company, we're doing uh, another off Broadway production, which is always a a lot of work and a lot of fun. Um, It's always a passion project because you can't make money (laughs) in a theater (laughs) company with a theater company. Uh, I'll be doing that. And I actually, I mean, I'm hoping we can travel more, some more with the kids. Uh, There will be two then in the spring. So we'll see. I mean, we've been traveling with them quite a bit, but I'm hoping to, um, you know, to work. We have on our docket, but I don't think 2019, but we want to go to Australia and visit very dear friends of ours. But I don't know if that's going to happen in 2019 because, yeah, they're going to be two. I, I think that's a lot. <laughs> the trouble too, too. And we wanted to thank you as well because we, you, we've we talked and we said thank you very via email and stuff. But to connect us with Nicole Miller for our Rocket Like a Redhead tour, it was so cool to connect with her. And oh, obviously she's oh, a redhead. Good. So it was so cool. Yeah. And thank you for that connection because that was really of course. awesome. Of course. Yeah, no, she she's totally supportive of, of, you know, other redheads. She always said to me, like, you have to, but you have to like make another baby. You got to get a redhead because <laughs> my, because my boys are, um, they have dark hair because of my husband. He has, you know, he's dark and a dark yeah. hair. And, um, no, she's funny. She loves redheads and she's always into like casting redheads in her shows, which is awesome. Yeah. And her dresses are stunning and we love colors yeah. are really great. And it's the yeah. structure of the dresses too. It just makes you feel mm-hmm. so it gives you an extra pep in your step when I have a Nicole Miller dress on. Yeah. 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 yeah they make yeah, I know really exactly what you mean. Yeah. Well thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank and you we guys. Can't, we can't wait are. to keep seeing you on hopefully maybe my Netflix, my T V <laughs> in my my living room. <laughs> I know we'll keep connecting on social media too because we love to see pictures great. of your boys and your career. Thank you. I love following you guys and I love seeing your journey and how much you're doing for this redhead community. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. We'll have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you too. Okay. Check you soon. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.
The H2 Bar Box, a monthly beauty subscription box for redheads. Each box is worth $80 plus, and each product is redhead friendly approved. Head to h2barbox.com to subscribe and use code podcast to receive 20% off. I just have to say one thing. How real is she? She's so real and she's so cool and I just feel like she's so down to earth and it's kind of hard to meet people like that nowadays. Definitely, you know? especially with as successful and well-known as a person as she is. Yeah. I thought it was funny when she said about the doppelganger with Amy Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it so true though? I mean, redheads really do look similar because a lot of the hair is the similar style. The color is obviously similar. The outfits are sometimes like more complimentary for a redhead to wear like certain colors. That's probably why she looks so much like Amy Adams in that picture with the red dress. Yeah. And then anytime we feature that, you know, how we do that. Uh, quote thing that says you look like so and so yeah yeah and all of our followers always do have s- someone someone they like. that they post that they've said that they look like I don't think I've ever gotten anything no one's ever told me that I look like someone no Uncle I- Johnny used to say that I looked like Meg Ryan you really didn't I know <laughs> <laughs> and she's not even a redhead I mean that's besides the point but yeah, I, 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 yeah, I feel like there's going to be some point where, you know, I always got like, oh, you're like such a little mermaid or like you're such an Ariel. Like that was something I always got as a little kid. And I feel like Disney really does represent redheads well, I think. They have really cool. They have, they have a little mermaid. They have Marita. Oh, I love her. I you know. could look like her. You did in the book. Our I book. Know. Our book, I did. I like showcased That's your my, doppelganger. My showcase. A Pixar character. <laughs> <laughs> they... Uh, the hairstylist Kira, um, who's been our hairstylist forever, we talk about her. She a took lot. hours to do your hair. Do it was well. My hair is naturally curly, but she went through and air dried it with a diffuser, and then she went through and actually like recurled all my curls. And she like took the strands up. Remember how she yeah. did that to kind of make it a to little make bit it look more, more bigger, like naturally full. Yeah. bigger. And uh, so it's all my hair and it's my curls, but it was cool to like kind of represent her. And I know Jessica Chastain, she actually did a photo shoot. She did. Um, of Marita on the on horse, horse and everything. With, with, the, bone with, with the bone arrow. Yeah, and the cape. But I, I really think Jessica Chastain and Bryce Dallas Howard do look very similar. I think oh, it's yeah. their bone structure. It is. It's their bone structure and their eyes and like the way, yeah, they look very, very similar. They also have like that porcelain redhead skin that right. they don't have a lot of freckles. They have more of like a porcelain skin with like a very pronounced nose. Don't you think so? Like Julia Moore too. They all have that look, face, yeah. that look. Like us. Yeah. <laughs> and just, probably people who are listening in too. <laughs> they're like, oh my God, I look like Jessica Chastain. Yeah. Which yeah. I love Jessica Chastain's new bob. Have you oh, seen it on yeah. her Instagram? Doesn't it look perfect? It's her structure of her jawline yeah. with that cut. Yeah. She looks amazing. She looks so cool. Well, it was just awesome to just hear from her. I think a lot of women who are like, they look up to these celebrity redheads and to just know that they're just – you know, she's a hardworking mom now. and With twins. And I if you know. haven't watched Godless, give it a chance. Especially Stephanie if you're not fan. into <laughs> Western it's so films good. or, you know, it's a mini series. I think it's seven episodes. We're in no way endorsed by Godless, by the <laughs> way. If someone's like, this is just something that I love. Just like how I told you to watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah, that's another On Amazon. One. But Godless is just a really great show. And it does – I love that she said to the the bond that the females, the women had while they were filming. Because you kind of see that while you're watching Godless. You know, it takes place in that – I think the town's called La Belle. And it's an all-woman. All the men die. So it's an all-woman – Cast. Um, no, it's an all-woman – well, the cast – for women, mm-hmm. um, LaBelle is the town and it's only mm-hmm. women. So they do have, you know, there are some caddy girls and whatever. But just give it a chance. Um, it's a really great show. That's why it's won so many awards too. That's when you know that it's that it's done really well. So I'm just, I'm it's so good because I love the term like redheads support redheads. Stephanie and I did a Kickstarter Women support camp- redheads, yeah. Yeah, women support women, redheads support redheads because we did a Kickstarter campaign in 2014. Oh 
And it was so cool that redheads were supportive of us starting the Rocket Like a Redhead tour. And we just kind of always hashtag like redheads support redheads because we feel like we support Christiane just like we support Julianne Moore or like Amy Adams. And you support people who look like you and represent you. And that's, and remember when we were on the Rocket Like a Redhead tour, it was cool to, you know, have event planners who were redheads, have oh, yeah. caterers who had their own business and they were women as redheads have right. some of the sponsors. Like I remember in Seattle, the nail company, she had just started it like a year ago. She was a redhead. So it's great to kind of team up with these redheads and do cool stuff and just support each other and be there for each other. I just think it's a great thing, especially nowadays with like everything that's happening in like the media and everything. It's just nice to, you know, women Have empowerment. Some positive. Red redhead empowerment yeah yeah so redheads let's just continue to support each other and love each other and if you see a redhead walking down the street obviously give them a nod or give him a hug like the Dave <laughs> Matthews band con um what's that song it was he gives a hug to everyone in the music video it's an old song but I don't know give it a chance yeah. <laughs> they might think you're weird but yeah. who cares yeah because it is a silent club and we're all here to support each a other a secret club so. Yes, silent secret. <laughs> Same thing. Stephanie loves breakfast night. <laughs> and, and then always rock, rock it like, like a redhead. redhead.